Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be testing four different file systems. ButterFS, F2FS, EXT4, and XFS in order to determine how well they perform as across uh, the normal workloads that I usually do. Now, I'll go through that with you right after this. I wanted to do this uh, this benchmark. Prime. There was two reasons why. Number one, I had a number of requests from some of you guys that wanted to see some comprehensive results of testing using EXT4. Uh, I had had performed a ButterFS versus ZFS test back when I was doing uh, some initial work with Fedora, <clears throat> and wanting. I'm just curious. Was curious to see how it performed with the Ubuntu ZFS. And so during that test, some of you asked for a more comprehensive one. So why am I doing this? I have another reason why. <clears throat> Pharonix does these tests as well. And he uses the, the ButterFS EXT4 F2FS, which is a flash file. It's one that's flash file system friendly. So, uh, and <clears throat> XFS. So his benchmarks leave some unanswered questions for me, at least. I, there's nothing wrong with the workloads he's chosen, and they're certainly valid. They're valid tests. So don't get me wrong. I'm not criticizing his work. He does very good work, in fact. Uh, but but he tests the app number, how long it takes to at, launch various applications. Uh, he tests how long it takes to do a load of a table on SQLite. <clears throat> and he also runs a number of FIO sequel, uh, se sequential read tests. Uh, through the system and to see how, how there are various sizes, various lengths of tests that he runs. He doesn't just run one. Checks to see how, how you know how well and how how quick the file system performs. But th those for me, I have different workloads than that, and so I wanted to see what would happen if I actually used my workloads uh, that I usually test with, and to see what the results is that I get. So. The methodology I'm going to be using today is I'm testing this on my primary workstation, which is an Intel Core i7-6700K. Yeah, I'm trying to get a Ryzen just like everyone else and trying to upgrade the uh, graphics card that's in it as well. It uh, it has 32 gig of memory. Uh, it won't affect the test, but in that machine, there's an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Founders Edition that's in the machine. Yeah, I know. Well, it... I bought it as soon as it came out, and I was able to get one back then. It doesn't, doesn't seem like we've been able to get graphics cards from NVIDIA ever since that. And, yeah, we still can't get graphics cards from uh, AMD either. But, uh, anyway, the uh, SSD that I'll be testing is a SATA SSD. It's a Samsung 1 gig. Uh, it is an, an older one, uh, 850 Evo, um, and it, <clears throat> it's been used for quite a number of years, but it's the same for all four tests. So even though the wear leveling on it is probably about, it's probably halfway through its age, <clears throat> I would say. So it's probably pretty typical of what you might find in a system that's been used for a while, like this one. I'm using Pop! OS 2004 LTS at the moment on that workstation. And uh, I took uh, a number of passes at this. So... I formatted the uh, Samsung SD between file system tests and then rebooted the system, then mounted it up and started the test, the 13 tests that I usually run uh, against that particular system. So, yeah, each of those tests are performed, each of those 13 tests are performed a total of five times, increasing the workload by one on each pass. So start with one <clears throat> concurrent work user and then working up to five concurrent users. I'm using 3.4.89 version of IOZone for this, and the command line parameters I use are exactly the same as the ones I have published on my GitLab page uh, in the shell file uh, for IOZone. So let's take a look at the results. The initial uh, write test, of course, just creates a file by writing it for the first time. And so there's overhead here on not only putting the file to the disk, but also updating the metadata and the uh, I ta inode tables in order to insert it into the directory and make it searchable. So <clears throat> all of the tests perform ab about 
uh, the same at the end. They all cap out. I think that's pretty much capping the this the speed of that particular drive. So they're slammed up against the wall of the physical performance of the drive, which is what you want. Um, uh, but you'll notice there's quite a bit of variation as we work up through the workloads. Uh, the blue one here is uh, the uh, the first worker load, and then we add two, and then three, four, five, and 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 so forth. So uh, I ha I don't know why I have two worker loads here. It's some anomaly in the way that the benchmark was uh, uh, doing the pivot, but there should only be one. <laughs> but uh, anyway, and there's a there's a pretty long start stall here coming up on the first. This is both the same, both one workload. And then uh, two, three, four, and five. Then there's a big, in, big uh, increase as it goes out. So, <clears throat> yeah, they're they're all ext4 is slightly slower, but the rest of them look like they're all pinned about the same amount. On a rewrite test, what you're doing, what it, this particular one is doing, is simply it's not only just writing it, but it's also going back and rewriting the uh, the different blocks of the file again and again. So. Uh, same kind of thing that's going on as before. Uh, it's pretty much pinned. Ext4 is just slightly behind a little bit, so it's, it it didn't really change much from uh, the initial start of the test. Now, uh, ButterFS starts out the slowest with one concurrent user, and then it, as it scales up, it ratchets up fairly quickly, as do all of them. Uh, a simple read test just to see what happens uh, if you're repeating, if you're doing a read sequentially through the file. And uh, <clears throat> we see ButterFS is uh, way back in the performance until it gets up to the second user and then it adds on more for the third and then it finally scales on up. Uh, XFS, similar, but its performance on single user is much faster. EXT4 is much faster on the single user, and then they all end up pretty comparable, except for F2FS kind of has a blip here where when it gets into the third user, for some reason, it drops back a little ways. Reread test is uh, you're rereading blocks of the file. So you read forward, then you reread them, then you, then you back up again. So yeah, kind of indicative of, of tests that you might see in databases that are doing searches or or you might see this in compilers as well are pretty common uh, as it goes through the different passes. So the EX, EX, uh, XFS really comes out early and pins at about the second user. And it just stays pegged up against the uh, drive, drive performance. Uh, F2FS kind of scales up nicely. Uh, same with uh, ButterFS, except again, its performance down here on the single user, single concurrent user, is still poor in comparison to the rest of them. EXT4, same thing. It's coming up pretty quickly and then pegs out, but it's still scaling up all the way to the end. Reverse read would be uh, something that you might see in imagery or even video where you're editing video to come back uh, to a spot to insert a pointer or to add additional sections on tracks. Audio does the same thing uh, or it will reverse read to get back to a position uh, in the file to begin doing an insert or something like that. All of these tests perform about the same, except for the single, you know, the first user. They all look pretty equal uh, coming into the test, so not really much to comment there. Stride read is typical of what you might find in a database where it's doing a read and it does a block of, let's say, 200 kilobytes or something, or maybe a 200 megabytes, and then it will jump uh, into the file. So usually it's a database <clears throat> has indexes that are positioned at the front of the record and then there's usually an offset pointer that points to where the data begins. And so stride reads are pretty typical in database loads. I think I've mentioned that before. Uh, <clears throat> so comments here, all the file systems are equal on the first user except for ButterFS again. 
and all of them look like they're fairly comparable as far as the workloads are concerned. Random read is reading all over the file. Again, this would be typical of a, of a database application that is doing a search, or it would be pulling data out. It could also be a grep, or it could be a file system search. Same thing here. Uh, they're all about equal, except for ButterFS on the, on the first concurrent user, and then they all end up about the same. Mixed workload is you're mixing in reads and writes within the same iteration of the test. Uh, and so this would be simulating an update on, on, a, on, on a, a file that could be a, you know, an index sequential, it could be a random file, it could be a, a database file where you're doing updates to it. Because you always read first to make sure you're at the position, then you write where the location is. <clears throat> These... Uh, have mixed results on the different file systems. You see they all end up about in the same place, pegged on the uh, drive uh, performance. Random write test is randomly writing uh, uh, inside of a file. Again, this would be video editing, audio editing, uh, where you're moving, st moving the heads around uh, in, on your now I say heads, you're, you're moving your insert pointers around on your timeline of your audio or video file in order to do a, a, a write. There are other applications that do this as well. That's not the only ones. Uh, <clears throat> these are block reads, typical uh, C type reads, uh, block writes. <clears throat> Again, about the same. F reads, this is the typical C read that is done uh, and so this would be indicative of most utilities inside of Linux that are written in C F right same thing so what does all this mean I did a geometric mean of all these tests <clears throat> just to see where things fall uh, as you can see from the chart the XFS was the fastest file system of all of them uh, overall uh, and followed by F2FS then EXF and ButterFS was in last place I think what hurt ButterFS was it's it's uh, single user performance is it's usually quite a bit lower and a geometric mean is a sum and then uh, it is the a sum of the tests that are multiplied together and then uh, you do the nth root of, uh, of the result to receive the geometric mean. It's supposed to show you kind of the performance of all the tests and it's pretty common in statistics to use geometric means in order to publish any results. So uh, yeah, XFS is the fastest all around file system for Linux still. F2FS is a good choice if you're using flash drives like SSDs or NVMEs. It has the added capability of adding encryption to the file system, so uh, without having to create an LVM volume. Uh, EXT4 is uh, if it's still as old as it is, it is still a very good file system for Linux. ButterFS is a good choice for servers, but I would have to say it's a poor choice for workstations, simply because of the workloads of you know up to two concurrent users are not stellar uh, with ButterFS. Yes, I know there's a lot of different reasons to use ButterFS, but if you want, you know, in my opinion, I've already shown that ButterFS is slower than ZFS, and if you really need all the features that ButterFS has, you'd be better off going to ZFS. So, that's that's what it, that's pretty much what I found uh, today. I, I don't go into this looking at, at the results uh, ahead of time and trying to slant them one way or the other. I just run the test and then see what the results are. So uh, I'm not a, I'm, the, the reason why I have used XFS all these years is because every time I have conducted tests on different file systems, whether it be a hard drive or an SSD or an NVMe, XFS does have its problems <clears throat> in higher speed file systems when you get into NVMe particularly if they're mirrored or they're in a raid, then yeah, it will it, it will show its age. Uh, EXT will as well. But uh, in those situations, I have a tendency to migrate back to ZFS anyway. So 
that's what I had today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, hope to see you all again on Friday. Take care and bye for now.